Look what it says. Open Systems, the blueprint for a connected future. Published on January 10th. I just discovered it, but it was retweeted and shared, of course, from Stellar, um, their official one on X. But this is good stuff. I like this. It states the concept of open systems emerged as a solution to counter the fragmentation that initially characterized the first wave of computer systems and, of course, their applications. In the case for open systems, creating an interoperable, integrated world, the Stellar Development Foundation explores historical context. If anything, we're learning a lot about history tonight, are we not? Lots of references, right? Core principles, real world applications, open systems emphasizing their role in fostering innovation, transparency, and equitable access to the tech. They got this white paper here, if you will. No, it's not a white paper about Stellar XLM, but it states it begins by revisiting the origins of open systems in the late 80s. Don't you like how I kind of tied in those other examples? We gave you some historical examples of gold ETFs. Then we went to the BSV segment, showed Dr. Craig Wright referencing some old protocol from the 80s and it's another one anyway i don't know if anybody ever catches some of those things i do but whatever it does highlight the unix operating system a pioneer of standardized program interfaces and third-party collaboration talks about some of these ecosystems http for instance right but it states how for instance you know even http http was dominated by a small group of players whose walled gardens and you think who they're referencing there. I mean, some people say, well, they're referencing Gilbert Verde and Aquant. Eh, maybe it's just a common thing that they all say. But I thought that was interesting. Um, wall gardens restrict user choice and stifle competition. So how do we have all these working together? That's the bottom line, right? Well, there's a case for open systems in an integrated world. And one thing you're going to notice here when we get more into it is constant references to interoperability, um, references to the U.S. policy makers. And if anything, when I got more into this, I thought it was interesting. And if anything, shout to Will Fix, because one on, on one of his videos, he had this whole thing about like Ripple XRP working with the government and so on. And of course, he gave a shout out to Crypto Hulk, but it wasn't just Hulk. You know, you saw, for instance, um, Zach Rector talk about this. You saw some other content creators talk about it and everybody kind of gave their own two cents. But I didn't want to hop on that bandwagon because the way I look at it, they did a really good job on it. If anything, I want to bring it to you guys. Is there really a connection when it comes to Stellar and the US government? Or do you feel like, well, yeah, there is, but is there anything solid? We'll get more into that here in a bit. But I want to pull up, is this actual thing in regards to this topic from the open systems paper. Now this of course is a PDF that I decided to get more into. And in this PDF, I'm gonna come out of the frame for a second because I wanna put emphasis on this and not me. You will see some interesting things. So for one, it goes up to this part on page 14, protecting and promoting open systems. Again, remember I was just talking about this, <clears throat> the role of the public sector. Talks about interoperable, uh, interoperability, connected technology, innovation, completion. Look what it says here for a second, though. We go further down, and it references the United States government consistently. Open and systems accomplish many key public policy objectives, promoting operational resilience. And you get more into it. Stellar has these recommendations which are designed to support U.S. policymakers in their efforts to encourage growth and development of open systems. References the government again, develop a U.S. government expertise. U.S. government should build human capital within relevant federal agencies and departments on open systems through training and professional development opportunities, including rotational assignments in the private sector companies that build on or contribute to the maintenance of open systems. So again, I wanna point this out because you saw our BSV segment and when this gets chopped up, maybe you guys didn't see it, but the point is constant reference to open end systems. This type of firsthand ex 
technical experience and learning is essential to fostering a baseline proficiency in open systems among career civil servants. Once again, back to the reference of US policymakers, look at this for a second, standardized data sets, classifications, confidential sense of information. US policymakers should ensure that open systems actually improve outcomes and do not endanger individuals or organizations. Clear guidelines should be presented to prohibit the release of sensitive and personally identifiable information. I mean, we're not talking about Jasmine tonight, right? But that stands out for Jasmine's utility, does it not? So the point is, I'm going to come back into the frame for a second, is basically understanding the greater picture of all of this. You know, the narrative. We talk about the next step forward when it comes to proper regulations. But if anything, my takeaway for you guys is understanding the bigger players that are sitting at the, the table, if you will, to have the solid innovation, to have the solid utility to get the job done. We talk about regulations, say what you want, but Tara Kono introducing DFFT, Data Free Flow with Trust, is the template or blueprint that is now being used in Europe. And then we use that template over here in the United States, not called the same thing, but when you look at it side by side on the comparison, it's literally the same. How do we go from all of that to the next step? Notice what Stellar's doing here. They did what? They write a paper literally giving what they consider the blueprint for proper regulation. I think you're going to start seeing more and more about this, where there's interviews from top leaders for other blockchains and so on. This is the narrative. Why write this all out if it's not if it's for nothing? It's not for nothing. So Talks more about the supportive creation of public projects. Look at this for a second. Open Data DC support creation of community-led data-based applications and use cases. U.S. policymakers should support the creation of similar engagement opportunities that drive practical use cases, support the adoption of open-end systems and their designs. Look at this reference. You're going to love this too, especially if you're a quant fanatic. Promotes interoperability as a significant federal prerogative. U.S. policymakers should identify areas that could benefit for greater interoperability, common technical standards such as data portability, message forms. Gee, I wonder what the message forms would be. Think about it, guys. ISO 222, fully implemented by when? November, late November 2025. Digital identity. Again, you know, we're not talking about Jasmine tonight, but that's what really stands out for him. And develop policies that promote the use of open formats, protocols, and public projects. Say what you want. If you're a BSV fan, you already understand the whole significance of IPv6. Look at this for a second. Sound policy should also maintain interoperability both within and between systems to prevent a formation of wall gardens. Again, back to the whole Gilbert Verdian reference all the time. But when we get into this again and again, I won't do it all night long. U.S. government there, U.S. government here, White House, Department of Commerce, Science and Technology Policy, Public-Private Cross-Collaboration, and just goes on again. U.S. government already major source of funding and scientific and engineering research development. That part right there kind of hints the whole thing of, are we going to make a budget for the future for investing into innovation or blockchain and DLT? And I think, honestly, the answer is yes. I'm not a fortune teller, and I ain't gonna predict in the future, but when I see things like this, I would say, yeah. Look at this for a second. And then, yeah, we're not talking about DAG tonight either, but look at this. Increase the share of R&D from agencies, departments, like the National Science Foundation and Department of Defense. If that doesn't make me FOMO more <laughs> into DAG, in which I don't hold yet, yet, I get it, but it makes me want to. Forward open source projects, initiatives, bolster the growth, development of open, integrated data and knowledge infrastructure that could benefit private industry and maintain the United States competitive edge internationally. Now, again, it's not a quant segment, but say what you want. Remember the research that we dropped last week? Last week, that whole thing of quant positioning itself for the U.S. and literally reading all this same terminology about walled gardens and preventing all this from happening. Look at this. United States again, U.S. again. So it's all there. 
And if anything, I'm going to drop it into the comments for you guys. If you want to nerd it out, you're definitely welcome to do so. But check this out for a second. <clears throat> it's all there. You can verify it for yourself. I am going to call it, and I'm going to maybe reference it a little bit later. What's the date today? 1-16-2024. I honestly think by, yeah, by the end of 2025, we should already bend to where we need to be with this particular paper. And if anything, why cite a paper? Well, why wouldn't you cite something? You know, back to the days when I was teaching, you had to have two sources, if you will. Well, what's the extra source here? Don't have it tonight. But if anything, you can source the material for yourself because you have a broader understanding that something had to be sourced somewhere in reference to the bigger plan. And the bigger plan is regulations. They're going to be coming sooner than I think most people think. And in closing, the reason why I'm bringing it to you guys is I want to state this. So basically it's like this. The significance of open systems, and in particular, right, when we talk about um, the, United, excuse me, the United States government and Stellar's role into the whole bigger picture, open systems, if you weren't aware of it, design is significant, of course, for the U.S. government for various many reasons. Some of the ones you saw in that paper, I'll get to a few key ones, about four of them. If you understand the bigger picture, it's like this. And this is, again, just some of my notes. Increased competition, innovation. Remember I was talking about innovation, especially with BSV earlier, scalability and all that. Open standards, because, you know, Gilbert Verdi is always talking about those standards. And interfaces allow multiple vendors to compete for government contracts, driving down costs and occurring, encouraging innovation. So even if you're a person, you're like, I don't want the government involved, because that's centralization, not decentralization true but what about those costs being drove down and encouraging more innovation because maybe we have like that paper mentioned the funding definitely hints a lot about the funding flexibility adaptability open systems if you're not aware, aware of it can be more easily upgraded modified and integrated with other systems gilbert verdian talked about this right that's the beauty of the overledger as they are not locked into uh, proprietary technologies. This is where I have a real issue with BTC because how can you really legitimately get the job done? People can say, well, you know, BTC does have interoperability with all these other things. Okay. What's the one that's going to throttle everything? You know, be, be stuck in the mud. It's going to be BTC. It's too slow. What about enhanced security, transparency, openness allows for greater scrutiny of system components potentially leading to improved security and reducing some of those vulnerabilities. Because just like a Windows update or any other particular update of software and so on, you're not going to just settle for what's currently there because it might be buggy, right? You have to have proper upgrades. All right, these two things. What about enhanced security, transparency? Right, totally. Greater scrutiny of system components potentially lead, of course, to improve security and reduce vulnerabilities, interoperability, collaboration. I don't need to talk you guys ear off about that. But one thing I do want to point out in regards to that paper, Stellar's open systems, what's called the blueprint for a connected future, that particular report, that, of course, was published January 10th, just a few days ago. But it does highlight specifics on how open systems, of course, can benefit the U.S. government. And man, did it do a good job of getting into that if you look more into it. So for me personally, I think it's kind of like the blueprint for policymakers because they do have policy advocacy. Stellar could advocate for open system principles through policy recommendations and engage with policymakers. I actually think that's going on behind the scenes. I don't know for sure. But why write it all? you know, in that paper, if it was a nothing burger, I mean, boy, that would be the nothing burger of nothing burgers. What not? What about pilot projects? We're always seeing pilot projects. Hence Sorbonne and so on, where that's going, right? Stellar could very well collaborate with the government agencies on pilot projects. Listen to this to demonstrate the benefits of open systems implementation. All the people there are and Stellar as we speak. Oh, it's not moving because it's not there yet. You know, it's like, as the saying goes, you got to give things time. 
you know, not to reference um, Field of Dreams, if you build it, you know, they will come. Well, they haven't come yet, but it's built, and they're consistently building other pilot programs. What about the technical expertise of all this? Well, for instance, keep in mind, Stellar could provide technical expertise and support to agencies implementing open system approaches. And this is something we want to point out for a second. I'm not a big fan of the World Economic Forum, right? I'm not. But I do recognize Danell Dixon is over in Davos as we speak, and they're talking about some things behind the scenes. And for some of the things that we've seen that's not behind the scenes, where they have pictures, video, and so on, you're trying to tell me that Stellar isn't providing technical expertise to, for instance, the WEF about some of these things and the other agencies or behind the scenes, maybe because of NDAs and so on, about open system approaches and the bigger picture. I think that's totally going on. I'm just going to call it on that. Teach us out. Now, what about some examples, just real quick, about current U.S. as the United States governmental applications of open systems? I'm not going to bore you with the technical details of all of it because it sounds like a super nerd, but there's a thing, it's called MOSA. Now, hear me out about this. MOSA is called a Modular Open Systems Approach and it's part of the Department of Defense. Listen to this for a second. This is good stuff. MOSA uses an open standards and interface to create more adaptable and interoperable military systems. Wow. The United States web design system, which is called WSWDS, is a shared set of design components and code that government agencies can use to create consistent and accessible websites. And last but not least, listen to this, 18F design system. Were you aware that was developed by the United States Digital Service? I know it sounds like a weird term. It's a system that provides reusable components and guidelines for building modern and user-friendly government websites and applications. And to have Stellar, referenced in this paper to point towards all of this if they're not working with the government then somebody tell me what's the bigger picture now i get it guys while concrete details about current uh stellar's current level involvement of with the u.s government on open system initiatives are currently unavailable because let's face it probably because the ndas and it's the government for crying out loud the report and potential collaboration avenues suggest an evolving relationship. Again, reference back to the whole thing of that paper. Read the whole thing. You might be glad you did. Because it is crucial to understand the active monitoring and track upcoming developments for a clear picture of their engagement. Will we see more of these particular papers? Well, possibly. But my thing is this actions speak more loudly than words, do they not? So if you see them, Doing these things behind the scenes, well, it just kind of makes you come to the conclusion of why. And if the answer is why, because we don't understand the bigger picture for Stellar, understand the United States government is doing something because we've seen evidence to support that they have. And what is a perfect example for all the people who are saying the United States is anti-blockchain and DLT? It is quant because what you've seen back with Project Hamilton with, for instance, Quant Network with, working with MIT and the United States Federal Reserve. So that was a real thing that was speculative that was confirmed, right? At the end of the day, the overall design that holds to be significant, or whole water, if you will, of the potential for the United States government and Stellar's quote-unquote report, well, it could play a very valuable role in advancing just that, Stellar's adoption for all of us now. It sounds like I'm probably wrapping it up on that part, but I'm not. I want to point this out real quick. This is in regards to Sorbon. This is big. So check this out for a second. Straight on your screen. We finally have a date when it comes to Sorbon, right? Well, what is this? So for one, <clears throat> officially two weeks from January 30th. Why would they point out the 30th? That means there are two weeks from the Protocol 20 vote, which brings Sorbon, yes, to Stellar Mainnet. Now we're finally getting deadlines. Is this a nothing burger? No, I don't think so. But basically speaking, let's pull this up as well. And here it is, because we're always talking about Sorbonne. And it's this rollout. Stellar Networks phased rollout of smart contracts. Remember the original publishing date, December 19th? 
but it talks about what they're trying to do for the last two years in regards to the existing network functionality. Of course, that milestone I pointed out, I think, a while back with you guys. But validators have agreed to do what, guys? Um, do this January 30th vote on the mainnet upgrade to protocol 20, and it should give the ecosystem time to prepare by installing relevant software. So I think this is going to be big, and we'll pay more attention to it, if anything. Um, but your main key takeaway from it all, like we mentioned before, is a few months ago, we talked about 40 projects going live, and then it was 70. There's an update in regards to that, right? After more than two years of technical discussions, hundreds of thousands of lives of code and over 150 projects that they know of will be deployed on testnet, but the upgrade will mark the new era of Stellar Smart Contracts tech stack that will deliver productivity through batteries included developer experience built to scale. I think that's massive, obviously. And in conclusion, look at this. This is from the Beans app and Stellar reposts this. Because we are talking about fees last week. Fees on Stellar are so low that they can actually sponsor fees within their non-custodial wallet. What does that mean for you and me? It means that the transfer cost is basically nothing, which results in a way better UI, user, um, user index, right? So basically, user interface, excuse me. Send 10 USDs to a friend. They receive 10 USDC instead of 9.9999. That is worth pointing out. Shouldn't it cost money to send money? I think that's one of the slogans that they're pointing out. I, of course, shared this particular one to you guys before about you know the 1 million stable coins. How much does it cost? Stellar says at number one at 0 0.501. And Solana is not even four zeros one, right? They're three zeros. So it's not even close. Not even close at all. Thank <laughs> you.